Interest rates are rising. Banks are failing. The US government is about to run out of money completely. And everywhere you look, people are debating whether property prices will fall by 7%, 12%, or even 20%. It's logical and it makes for scary headlines that get clicked. But there's just one problem. It doesn't seem to be happening. In fact, a very surprising data point has just been released showing that house prices are rising again. Can that be true? And what does it mean for you? Well, I'll show you the data. I'll talk about why it might be happening. And then I'll share what could be happening next based on hints from a couple of very important recent developments. So property prices started falling from around last October onwards. But in February, Halifax started reporting a return to grow based on mortgage valuations, as did right move in January based on asking prices. This kind of got ignored because it just didn't seem right. And besides, the important nationwide index was still showing prices falling. Until, that is, just the other day, when after seven months of falls, it registered a surprise increase. Now, this is just one month of data, but you can look at any metric you like, including mortgage approvals and agreed sales, and it's all looking decidedly non-crashy. Of course, dead cats do bounce, and a crash could still happen. At the start of the year, we predicted a fall of no more than 2%, so we do have to be careful with looking out for data and interpretations that just support our own view. But it is worth questioning why the house price balloon is seemingly refusing to burst. And the answer might have been under our noses the whole time. House prices respond to the cost of borrowing. If interest rates go up, you'd expect house prices to go down. And yes, they're down a bit, but it wouldn't be crazy to think, as many commentators do, that they'd come all the way back down to where they were at the start of 2020, which would give us a lot further to fall. But this is missing something, and that something is inflation. Because you might also expect food prices and the price of services to come back to 2020 levels, but they're not going to. And in fact, if you look at house prices after stripping out inflation, they're actually significantly lower than they were in 2020. According to Nationwide, the average real house price halfway through 2020 was £273,000, and now it's £258,000, which means that after adjusting for inflation, they're back to around 2014 prices. And importantly for property, wages aren't going back to 2020 levels either. So if wages keep up with inflation, which recently they haven't, but over the long term they do, this makes houses more affordable without the actual price you pay needing to fall. This isn't the first time this has happened. There were downturns in the 1970s and the 1980s where house prices adjusted for inflation, that's the red line, fell on an annual basis. But the actual price you pay, that's the blue line, stayed positive. So what does this mean? Well, if you own a home already, it doesn't really make much difference. Your equity remains unchanged. And if your wages have gone up, then your mortgage is now smaller as a multiple of your earnings. But if you're thinking of buying a property, either as a home or as an investment, then what happens next does matter. And recently, we've seen a couple of important clues about what that might be. Before we get into those though, if you found this video useful so far, please give it a like and consider subscribing. It really helps me and it makes it more likely you'll see videos like this in the future. So what could come next? Well, first, I think it's important to say there could still be a significant correction. There are still a lot of mortgages that are yet to be refinanced at higher levels, and it's possible that the economy more broadly could get into trouble later in the year as inflation comes under control, but the Bank of England is still hiking interest rates. But there are two factors that could contribute to house prices staying up and even going up. The first is longer mortgage terms. Banks really want to lend because that's how they make their money. And they're doing that by offering longer mortgage terms, which reduces repayments because it's spreading them out over a longer period of time. Mortgage terms of 20 or 25 years used to be the norm. But here you can see, just over the last year and a half, the huge increase in mortgage terms of 35 years or more. There's even talk of a new provider offering 50-year mortgages. And there's another factor at play in the UK, a general election by early 2025. The party that's in power tends not to stay in power when they go into an election with house prices falling or a recession. So what will they do to keep prices up? Well, right on cue, there are rumours of a return to the help to buy scheme, which might appear in the Chancellor's autumn statement. This supposedly helps first-time buyers, but also helps to push house prices up. But even without support, first-time buyers are strongly motivated to buy, and data from Rightmove and Zoopla shows that this is the most active and competitive part of the market right now. This is probably due to some truly shocking figures about what's happening in the rental market. So keep watching this video next where I share that data and explain what's going to happen next to rents. 